Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. This is Friday, this 20, I think today's the 21st. And this is a webinar offered through the Belonging Project, led by Saifa Shah. It is my pleasure today to introduce our guest speaker, who is a friend, an advocate for inclusion and diversity, a coach, and someone who's made it her job, and it is her passion to help others succeed. It is also her passion to move the needle and be part of moving the needle for diversity in the legal profession. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest speaker, Dr. Karen Khan. Karen is a psychologist and a certified coach. She's a consultant and she's also an author. She's an author of the book, Daunting to Doable, You Can Make It Rain. She's also the author of the book, 100 Steps to Doable, which is a pocket-sized inspiration for making it rain. I have that book, you should get it if you can. Karen has worked exclusively with lawyers and law firms for many years as a strategic business development coach and also as an innovative thought partner. She has passion, she has expertise, she teaches business development, strategic thinking, clear communication, personal effectiveness, relationship development, and she also addresses issues on advancing diversity and inclusion in our organizations. As a psychologist, she's also a recognized gender expert. She has studied gender differences, both men and women, for over 45 years. I welcome Karen here today to share her thoughts and her wisdom <laughs> with us, just as she has done through her platforms that I have taken advantage of, as well as through Welcome, thank you so much for your generosity. We appreciate having you here and the microphone is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. What a nice introduction. Uh, I am thrilled to be here. I remember several months ago talking to Corey um, and we were talking about the complications and the pain and all the questions that arise with COVID. And how are we going to move through this together? And several days later, Corey then said, I have an idea. Um, and that's when we do it together, things are going to get better. And she started the Belonging Project, which later on expanded to include diversity, equality, inclusion, and most of all, belonging. The word Ubuntu became popular worldwide during apartheid as Bishop Desmond Tutu explained a philosophy in multiple South African ethnic groups that our humanity derives from the humanity of the collective. Certainly a theme that's so important to all of us. Ubuntu symbolizes the universal bond we have as people and the focus on collective responsibility. And how often are we seeing that with the sad debate about masks or not masks and all that we can do to keep each other safe and healthy? Just as the pandemic has illustrated how independent we are, this collective, the Belonging Project, is focused on working together to move forward in our shared commitment to improving inclusion and diversity in the legal profession. We strongly believe, all of us involved in this project, that we rise and fall together. Built on this concept, the Belonging Project is a co collaborative network of professional and personal support for diverse legal talent across industry organizations and law firms. Through the Belonging Project, we are offering opportunities and programs to support diverse students and lawyers during the pandemic. This initiative will contribute to diversity in the legal profession and encourage others to contribute and leverage their expertise and resources. In collaboration with our industry partners, we will offer webinars such as this one today that's focused on professional and personal development, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a curated research resource center devoted to well-being and personal growth. 
I'm personally happy to be supporting this project because of my belief that we rise and fall together. I'm also happy to be talking about making now doable here in August of this year. Um, August means a lot to me. Um, it's despite the fact that I'm in my later 60s, I still resonate with back to school time and that being Labor Day. Uh, and I'm sure most of you are as well. And that's a signal to me that it's time for me to refresh what I'm doing how satisfied I am with what I'm doing, and critically the question, is what I'm doing fostering my goals and making my goals happen? And so what I do is I take the last week of summer, ending in Labor Day, which will start this time next week, to review what I'm doing, um, to refresh and think about all of my relationships and make plans for moving forward. And so that's what I want to talk with you about today. I want to give you a format and a methodology as well as thoughts about how to be thinking about your career um, and weaving in with that the reality that while this has been a very pressured, complicated time, new opportunities have emerged. And I want to inspire you or tickle you uh, to think about some of these things. You are welcome to send questions uh, during the presentation. And if I don't have time to get to those questions, I will answer you by email happily. Okay, so now, now I am in a, okay. Um, chaos, you know, as a psychologist, um, I can tell you that chaos causes disruptions. And disruptions cause configurations. And configurations result in opportunities. So while you may feel a heaviness because of all that's going on, and certainly you know, Michelle Obama said that she was experiencing low-grade depression, and I think everyone I speak to can you know, identify with that, there are possibilities out there. But here's a key possibilities will likely not be found where you're used to looking for them. To find them, you first need to know what you are looking for and what you really want to find. And that system, that methodology, and those questions, I want to talk with you about today. I will need to excuse me. I am having some technical problems advancing my slide. Okay, there we are. So what? here's a question. What do you need to advance your career and love it more? And here are the things that I typically hear. I need new experiences. I'm doing deal sheets all the time or depositions all the time or working with the same kind of clients or maybe even the same client all the time. Um, I'm looking, I'm needing billable hours. Uh, many of you are needing billable hours right now, as you may have found that your practices uh, had slowed down. Um, I want to work with particular individuals. There's a cool guy in another office, a cool woman in another office that I've always wanted to work with. New knowledge, exposure to areas, and people that I'd love to work with that could bring more fulfillment. So your first assignment that I'm gonna give you today is to make your dream list. What is it that you want? What do you need to advance your career and love it more? And I really strongly suggest uh, that you get a manual notebook. For those of you who don't know, remember what those things are, they're in paper, um, not digital. Um, there's a neurological reason for that. We can talk about it another time, but make a list of what you would love to happen. Um, certainly in the next four months, but let's say by the end even of 2021. Okay. Now here's some questions about where you might be able to find them. So how can you offer your substantive skills, the knowledge that you might have as an M&A lawyer or an IP lawyer, how can you offer them, but differently? 
but perhaps it will be in a different place to a different group of people, a different industry. Um, what ideas do you have that might be helpful internally and to clients? What would be helpful for you to learn now um, in this virtual world? There's so many places to take new courses, uh, to learn new information. What would be helpful for you to learn? Um, how are and will your clients be different in the near term and midterm? You know, we think about you know, restaurants um, and how much they're increasing their takeout business and probably uh, decreasing the in restaurant business. Uh, that's how they're changing. Think about how all the clients in businesses are going to be doing their business differently. They certainly are. What new industries are being born and expanding? I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about that in a, in a bit. And most important, how can you expand your internal and external networks under these rare circumstances? And don't get distracted by I, what you can't do. I can't go to conferences. I can't go out to lunch. I can't have happy hours. Um, but start really thinking about what is available to me. Um, and that's one of the fun things about working together in a group. So here's what I'm going to be doing uh, on my staycation, and I recommend to you to start the process of refreshing. Number one, get an opportunities notebook to write down your ideas. Number two, be prepared to take time. This takes time. This isn't a 15 minute activity. Um, but number three, as busy lawyers, you may not have time to take two hours or to take a staycation or just do this sitting on the beach. So it's perfectly fine to take 15 minutes a day to reflect. I suggest doing it first thing in the morning. Most people are at their freshest first thing in the morning, but do it when we used to say in the 60s and 70s, when your biorhythms we're at a peak when you are at your most creative self. Now, opportunities come from listening, not pitching. So the more questions you ask, the more you listen, especially during these complicated times, the broader your idea base and opportunities are going to be. So think less about impressing people. Think more about a term that you all learned in law school, issue spotting. So lately, as I've been talking to so many lawyers who've been feel overwhelmed and buried under these really complicated circumstances, I've realized that there's two kinds of lawyers the complacent lawyer and the wise lawyer. And here's the difference. The complacent lawyer is waiting to see what develops. Will we get a vaccine? When will we get back into the office? When will things turn to quote normal? Which I'm not sure what normal is anymore. The wise lawyer positions him or herself for the future. Now, those of you who consider yourself to be diverse lawyers, um, on the call today, rightly and often, see yourself and have experienced yourself as not having as many opportunities than those white lawyers with privilege, that you feel blocked out of networks, uh, informal social gatherings, those informal mentoring processes when one got white guy talks to another white guy and just teaches him something over a beer. I encourage you to be aware of those things so that you can help drive change for your firm, but don't let that block you. Think about how to become a wise lawyer and then how to position yourself for those opportunities. And I'm seeing those opportunities open up more than they ever have before. So here's an important opportunity for my Caucasian peers, work with, get to know, 
promote, involve, mentor, and teach black and brown individuals who have you have not included on your substantive team. Of course, of course, black and brown individuals, there may be people in the firm that you haven't gotten to know. But one of the key points in finding opportunities is expanding who you know. Uh, talking with them about what this period has been like for them, what they need, uh, and what some of their biggest challenges are. This is the key important opportunity in moving this time of inequality to a time that advances equality. There are four buckets, places to look. And as you work with your opportunities notebook, I suggest in your brainstorming process that you have separate pages for these four areas. And I'm gonna talk with them more expansively, but right now I'm just going to name them. One is where are there opportunities inside the firm? Number two, past and current clients, your personal and professional network, and then a defined industry sector. Now, all of these may not be relevant for all of you. Um, those of you who are antitrust lawyers may find that item number one will bear the most fruit for you when you're in contact and working with corporate lawyers. Um, others of you who are corporate lawyers may find that developing an industry sector will be more helpful to you. So some combination of these four buckets will create advancement. So start to think about who you know in those areas. Now, how do you develop relationships? In this time in our culture and in the legal marketplace, giving it makes relationships stronger. We don't give to get. That's an opportunistic point of view, in my opinion. But giving tends to make most of you, and certainly me, feel authentic. So here are six gives. And those of you who are able to see me on camera, to my right, where I can touch, I have this list of six posted just so that it's always top of mind. And you'll notice four of them start with the letter I. Ideas, have you ever thought about? An example of an idea, um, I have a trademark lawyer who does a lot of work in the fashion industry. And when COVID started, and so many of us, myself included, were dusting off our sewing machines and making masks, she was working with a top fashion brand and she, said to them, have you guys ever thought about making branded masks? They were thrilled that their lawyer had even given them an idea and they moved forward into what we're seeing now today, all industries and all trade associations and everybody creating masks. But that idea was novel to them. Number two is introductions, internally and externally. You might wanna introduce parents uh, to each other who are struggling with similar issues. I believe, for example, that one of the ways to resolve the horrible pressure that many lawyer parents feel about having to deal with um, in, in home education is for them to take turns housing two or three kids. So I take all the ki all three kids on Monday and you do them on Tuesday and someone else does them on Wednesday. And of course that's dependent on people being you know, within a relatively easy commute for each other. Number three is in information and information is changing all the time. Regulations are changing all the time. Did you know that? Um, did you know that this is coming down the pike? Did you know, Here's a way to get your uh, mail in voting. Did you know that such and such is happening? Number four is invitations. These could be invitations to barbecues, happy hours, or to a program like this. Uh, also invitations to join the belonging project um, and to be a part of this wonderful collective 
of people who are sharing information. Number five is resources, books, websites, articles, and check out the resources page uh, on the belonging project. And then support. We need to be supporting each other. Um, how are things going? I've had clients, and I'm sure you have, who have had COVID, uh, who are feeling overwhelmed. Uh, anytime someone uses a feeling word, your clients use a feeling word, how can you support them? So here are your six gives, four I's, an R, and an S. So inside the firm. Inside the firm are opportunities to meet and work with dream colleagues. And those of you, such as SafeArth and other firms that are on the call today, um, think about who are people in other offices that you've never got, got a chance to meet before and reach out to them. Today, firms have intensified their focus um, on the chaos of their clients. Participate in helping clients, being on the COVID task force, being on the racial equity task forces, being on institutional client teams, um, and certainly busy substantive groups, busy industry groups. The phrase I hear the most from partners in law firms is that they want their associates to own their careers. And own the careers mean being proactive. It means reaching out to people that you might not have reached out to before or asking to be a part of a committee. Uh, the question, how can I help, is usually not as strong a question as I know that there's this committee. I have an idea I'd like to suggest. Could I join? So here are some questions to ask yourself and to write down in your notebook. Who have you always wanted to work with? This might be the chair of the firm. It might mean the uh, chief diversity officer. It might be a rainmaker at the firm. Who have you always wanted to work with because you heard they were just great people or that they had great knowledge to share? Number two, what new knowledge would you like to learn about? This could be substantive. It could be learning about an industry. And who are people engaged in activities or clients that you've always wanted to be involved with? This is your chance. So at the end of each little section, I'm going to give you an assignment. Take it as feels appropriate for you. Make a list of people you'd like to work with for any reason. Think about how you can help them. Can you help them with social media? If it's me, you can help me with technology. Um, you might want to ask them if they'd like to co-write an article with you. Um, could you do some research for them? Look at your six gives. How can you help them? Do your homework. Look at their bios, look at their clients, look at what boards they're in so that you can think about ways to help them. Avoid the question, how can I help you? That shows you didn't do your homework. And then contact them or ask for an introduction to them from one of your colleagues who um, may not know them. I had one of my colleagues uh, yesterday uh, is going to interview for a new job. And she asked me totally randomly, um, did I happen to know anybody at XYZ firm? Turned out I knew the chair of the firm. Um, and it was an easy way to introduce her. Um, and make an ask. So ask people, could I be involved? And if I could be involved, I'd be happy to create a LinkedIn page or a LinkedIn offer, or I'd be glad to start tweeting about the activities we're doing. I'm telling you, I don't tweet because it overwhelms me. But if somebody said, Karen, I'd love to work with you with Threshold Advisors and I'll do your tweeting, you're in, okay? 
So here's some actions for bucket number one inside the firm. Now your clients are overwhelmed. I know because my clients, you are overwhelmed. We're all overwhelmed. The most important thing to do in working with clients is having stellar client service. This means being responsive when you receive a communication. Now, if you're really busy and you get a note from a client, responsiveness can be just, Karen, I got your email. I will make sure I respond before I close off business today. Why do I, why is that important? How many of us go crazy when we don't know whether someone received our email? So just being responsive, saying, I got it, I'll respond tomorrow, is fabulous client service. Stay attentive to your clients, even if you don't get responses back. They are in the weeds, trying to keep their businesses afloat. Uh, and we're all seeing huge um, bankruptcy rates. So the more you can give them ideas, things to think about in a sustained way, the more valuable you are to them. Stay aware of their needs and listen for their needs when they're talking about talking to you. What are they saying they're dealing with on a personal level or professional level? Share any trends and issues that you hear. Um, whether you're reading, I read Bloomberg Law every morning, and I may hear, here's something that one law firm is doing. Have you guys thought about it? Um, share trends and issues that you're hearing about. And ask questions to identify the needs. And here are the two most powerful questions that will help you identify needs that they may have. Are you ready to write this down? They are one, what are you doing about? So the question could be, what are you doing about making sure that all of your employees have strong internet connection? And they may say, we don't know what to do about that. You may have solutions or you may have, there may be someone in your firm or your personal network. So the second one is what are you doing about? So what are you doing about the number of employees who are balancing parenting? What are you doing about the number of um, clients, the number of your clients, uh, customers who can't get out of their house to do shopping? What are you doing about and how are you dealing with? These reveal opportunities. And the more opportunities you are able to identify, this will increase your awareness and opportunities for you to bring in business and to strengthen relationships. So here's some conversational tips when you're talking to your clients. Ask more than tell, listen more than talk, ask lots of questions, not as a robot and not like you're deposing people. That's gonna make them crazy. Always ask about how they're doing first. In this time, the most important thing you can do is be a human being first and a lawyer second. Ask about their family. I have a 95 year old mother who's in independent living. Um, they lost power. Karen, how's your mom doing? Okay. Start with immediate issues and hear those two questions we talked about. And be curious about changes they may be seeing in their business and opportunity. Watching the Today Show, watching uh, CNBC, um, flipping through uh, USA Today, just quickly helps you stay alert to things that are going on on campuses, in industries, in businesses. So here's your assignment for how to help clients. Make a chart of the clients you would like to support. These could be 
past clients or current clients. If you work with others in the firm who are working with the same client, talk to that partner or that colleague to make to decide who's going to be the person who sustains the relationship so that that client isn't hearing from 85 people from Safar, Reed Smith. Just know who's going to be the point person. This also helps you all have a smaller key client list for communications because you're busy as well. Make a list of all of the practice areas in your firm. And next to each practice area, know what are the current key legal issues. So that even if you're an IP lawyer, you can ask about employment questions. Or if you're an employment lawyer, you can ask about bankruptcy questions or CARES Act questions. And then you can bring in the appropriate colleague. On your chart, add personal notes. Who are there? Do they have children? Are they married? I've got a client right now who's had to put off his wedding four times. Um, are they pregnant? Um, what are they doing about their hobbies? Are they putting off travel? How are they feeling about getting on an airplane? And then track your contact dates and topics. What I've talked about in terms of bucket number one and bucket number two, and I'm going to move forward, is best done on an Excel sheet because then you can create several different fields so that you can sort your clients. On to your personal and professional network. Here's how I look at who's in my personal network. The closer they are to you, the stronger those relationships likely are. As you're going on barbecues or having Zoom reunions with your family and close friends, um, make sure that you're aware of who do they know? Uh, what businesses are they doing? How are those businesses going? And are they willing to make introductions to you for you? Uh, how, are you in touch with your law school classmates? Um, I want to tell you, um, in that story I told you a couple minutes ago about the colleague who asked me, who did I know someone in that firm? Well, the managing partner that I knew, I haven't been in touch with for 13 years. Nothing, zero. And I wrote to her and in the subject line, I put, uh, rec uh, I put like an uh, email from an old, old friend. And she answered immediately how wonderful it was to hear from me. Um, there was no, so where have you been for the past 13 years? It was total delight. Um, and we realized that over the past 13 years, as we both have been growing up and taking leadership positions, that we had been doing some similar things. And she said, I'd love to talk with you more. And we have a Zoom meeting scheduled. Um, your neighbors, um, what, what do they do? So this is a time to be very alert about people in your network. Now, as I'm giving you a list of people, you don't have to do all of this. Choose, choose who you have time for, choose where the relationships are the strongest and choose based on what relationships have the most likelihood of helping you achieve whatever goals you have. That could be business, it could be a new job, it could be getting involved in a new hobby. So in my non-tech understanding language, I call that our personal algorithm. Come up with an algorithm for yourself based on how well you know, how that person can help you, um, and even your enjoyment of that person. And then choose maybe 25 people across bucket one, two, and three, and decide here's who I'm gonna focus on between now and the end of the year or between now and Thanksgiving and sustain those relationships. So here are your actions. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Ask questions as often as you can. 
Um, you can send people a note, which totally fits this COVID time. And it would say something like this. During this time, I've been thinking about people I haven't been in touch with for a while. Um, how are you doing? Uh, you know, how's you? How are you? How are your family? Um, avoid saying, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Um, you might say that to people who you're very close to. If you're saying that in a business context, it might connote um, that you're trolling for business. So you might, people know that everybody, you know, psychologists, lawyers, we're all in business and they know that um, to call you if there's anything you can do. So that's my take on that. When you're having conversations with your personal and professional network, as I said, start with being human, ask how their work is going during this difficult time, and then the two key questions that I've mentioned before. Now, as you advance your career, you want to think about how to grow in your value propositions to your firm, whether you are a summer associate or someone who is heading toward retirement, the more valuable you are to a firm, the higher your self-esteem um, and the more you will get rewarded in terms of opportunities, sometimes comp um, and all different kinds of things. So what you wanna do is establish your value proposition inside the firm to firm clients using your expertise and your knowledge. And also new opportunities are out there for establishing your value proposition. And these new opportunities can be found in industry sectors. When I use the word sector, I mean, a, you know, you'll think about a pie and the pie is an industry such as life sciences. That's an industry. But within that pie are slices. There are segments. Um, it could be a part of biotech or medical device or wearable technology or um, hospital systems. So think about industry sectors. Now, positioning yourself for the future requires an entrepreneurial mindset. Lawyers who are most monetarily successful have selected a marketplace to provide value to their firms. And this marketplace could be internally, uh, I am the go-to person inside the firm for, but usually, it's a long-term strategy that focuses on a particular piece of the pie, an industry sector. Um, I think a lot about the TV show Shark Tank and how often they say to the entrepreneur who comes in, who wants your product? And I say that to you as lawyers, who wants your product uh, your law skills. And as strange as this may seem, the narrower your marketplace, the more opportunities are there for you. So the opportunity to develop a, your value prop um, in this complicated time, uh, many opportunities have arisen. Uh, this means that there have been new ways to get to know people, and there are new ways and new industries. And I will say to you, the younger you are, the larger opportunity this is. For example, last October, I was working with a senior associate in a large industry and a large law firm. Um, again, this was pre-COVID, and I was helping him. Uh, get ready for his partnership memo. And we were talking about 
what he really, what industry, if he could work 24 hours a day with people from a particular industry, um, what industry would that be? And interestingly, last October, he was fascinated with telehealth. And so he was an M&A lawyer and he was working with people in private equity and encouraging them and showing them how telehealth was going to be among the next big industries for investment. Now giggle a little bit because telehealth is now a booming industry and he was brilliantly positioned. So a definition of an industry sector is a clearly defined group of individuals within a larger sector. They have the same business, goals, products, services, and trade associations. So telehealth. I have one woman, uh, I have a longer story, I won't tell you about it now, but she thought this industry sector thing was stupid. Um, and she didn't hesitate to tell me in a group setting, mind you, um, 10 years ago. And because her industry sector, she was in food and beverage, and she said, okay, Karen, if I was in an industry sector that I most enjoyed, it would be cheese. And so we thought about, would this be a prolific area for her to offer legal services? Uh, right now, eight years later, 10 years later, 80% of her work is in the cheese industry. Why? Because she thought of an industry she goes to the American Cheese Association conferences where potential clients are, and she's the only lawyer in the room. She knows because she reads about cheese. She, read, uh, she was reading about the impact of mad, mad cow. She's reading about the impact of um, trade embargoes. She's reading about one, for, one company, Kraft, because Heinz bought Kraft is no longer in the cheese industry. She knows their business and she knows their people. I encourage you to be thinking about industry sectors. And here are the pluses in the industry sector. And I'm just gonna leave this um, slide for you to take a look at. We'll give, we're happy to give you copies of the slides um, if you want, but I wanna make sure that we have time Q&A. Here are the things, the aspects that will tell you whether this is a good, I call it a niche. You could call it a niche if you want. Um, it's a business, not a substantive area. Can't afford your rates. It fits within the firm's strategic objectives. Um, and the goal is to be um, conversational and relational and create relationships not to be an expert. So what is the perfect sector? It will be about 300 buyers. So using myself as an example, uh, my industry is law firms. That's why I'm presenting to you today. My list of my industry sector is the AMLAW 250. Can they pay my rates? Uh, and do they have trade associations? Um, there isn't a perfect sector, but here are some features to, con to consider. But there are many more, and here are some brand new sectors to, con to consider. Um, if you don't have an industry sector right now, or you're looking to advance your careers, digital health, telehealth, online education, uh, manufacturing in the US is growing, trucking, uh, all of these kinds of things are growing. Um, some other ones are like the newspaper in industry, the tobacco industry, uh, the, uh, I was working with some who are Madoff lawyers. Those are diminishing. Here are some industries that are fresh, and wide open and have plenty of places for lawyers uh, where there's less competition. Notice that big pharma isn't here, okay? Notice that the fashion industry isn't here. Um, those tend to be industries that are huge, 
and have lots of lawyers in them. These and others, you, there may be less lawyers in the room. Um, in what way is the industry group strategy valuable to the firm? Well, the woman in the cheese industry, she expanded the food and beverage space that her firm was dealing with because they were just generic food. She brought in 200 potential cheese clients. And it doesn't matter that it's cheese. They are industries. They are businesses. All businesses need lawyers. It's additive. It doesn't replace practice groups. Firms, as they're developing this relatively new strategy, will have both practice groups and industry groups, and perhaps your firms do. Um, according to the research, the industry group strategy is still relatively new. Um, according to research, only about 27% of big law is um, efficiently and effectively using the industry group strategy. Um, in what way is this strategy helpful to you? It may allow you to have a leadership position. Uh, I have a woman um, who's a fourth year partner. Um, she was really what we call, I don't like the phrase, a service partner. She was serving other clients. Um, she has decided to go into personal and protective equipment. She's a product liability lawyer. She's created an informal right now PPE industry sector, and she's the leader. Um, that's been a great opportunity. Um, when you know your sector, it will answer your question. Uh, what conferences should I go to? What should I be reading? And so when you do 15 minutes a day of career advancement or business development a day, what you will be doing is reading in this sector or looking at your list of people in your sector and reaching out to them. And so you will know very concretely what activities to do and what to do tomorrow. Here are some actions. Um, take your time. Enjoy learning. Talk to your business development professionals about what they think might be some up and coming sectors. And then think, research. Google, explore um, your, uh, your intranet and your business development professionals have lots of knowledge aggregation and read. Here's a book that I think is really outstanding. It's about a year old now. Um, see the title in front of you, The Future is Faster Than You Think. Um, there are chapters on all industries and what the authors are believing these industries are gonna be developing and looking like uh, in this decade. And it will give you food for thought, definitely things for me to think about that I had never thought about. You don't have to read it all. Uh, look at the sectors that are interesting to you. I do recommend that you scan it. So here are your actions. Choose three industries that are interesting to you. Obtain a list of 100 companies in that sector. Um, you can do that by going to trade associations. You can Google what are the biggest telehealth companies. Um, uh, and, and then give that list to business development and ask are any of them firm clients. Then research. Um, I suggest that you make a binder. Um, I suggest that the binder be paper. So what I've been doing is going on to Google, finding an article that looks interesting to me, printing it out and then putting it in a binder so that I've made my own textbook. And then do 15 minute drills. These drills have three color highlights. In one color, every time I see the name of a person that I might like to meet. Number two, a color, every time I see the name of a company. And number three, every time I see an issue. This allows me to scan and then I can go back and read. Remember that everything that's on this slide is an exploration, it's not a commitment. And you're exploring, do I like this? Is it interesting? And is it an opportunity? 
Your goal is to answer the question. In what industry do I want to invest my non billable time and energy? And then create a plan. Uh, and here's the list of those things. So here are your final thoughts. As you're thinking about this, contemplation is a legitimate action. It doesn't mean, oh, I've just been thinking. Thinking is the precursor to doing something. Putting together a plan is the second, and then take small steps one at a time. And the question I ask is, this is your career. What do you want? Now, I'm going to see if any of you have asked questions. I am happy to answer questions. Um, you can type them in if you want. Uh, but I hope uh, as I'm waiting for questions or hopefully I haven't overwhelmed you, uh, but we will give you a copy of this if you want it um, and take your time with it. Uh, you can also get the book Daunting to Doable, which will repeat everything that we talked about. Get it on Amazon. It should be like $15. Um, don't get it from a third party. It'll be more expensive. Get it from Amazon. Um, and it will take you through a process for thinking. So any questions? Okay, uh, well, I would just like to um, end, and then I'm gonna give you the CLE information uh, by encouraging you to, even if you can take 10 minutes a day, to think about how to move your career forward. Also, please do everything you can to be including people that you typically don't include in your thinking, in your collaboration, in your work product, in casual conversation. This is a time for inclusion. Um, the CLE code for this program is SS, as in Safe Shaw, SS7741. Attendance forms will be provided in the post webinar email that all of you will receive. I be happy to answer your questions. Uh, I'm at Karen at thresholdadvisors.com. Uh, I will respond to you. Uh, I also am on LinkedIn and I would love to connect with you. Uh, I tend to post a lot. And it would be my pleasure to chat with you, answer your questions, and give you some ideas about next steps to take. Uh, Corey? I yes, will I see a question. Oh, okay. I see a question. I'm not seeing it, so please send it, it to says, me. What advice would you have for current law students? This same methodology. I would, number one, start making a list of what would be your ideal law firms. If you could pick 20 law firms to go to, what would they be? Who do you know is there? And start to think about what would an ideal practice look like for you? So when you're asked in an interview, what, what does being a lawyer mean to you? You can talk about that you've done some research about the PPE industry. Uh, you've done, you're fascinated with the online education industry. And you can provide a vision, not just of, I want to be a litigator, I want to be an IP lawyer, um, I want to be a copyright lawyer, but you can fill in the colors of that so that you can provide a vision of what being a lawyer means to you in many, many different colors. I would be thinking about that so that you can present it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Other questions? Thank you for listening, uh, for saying yes to participating on a Friday. Um, and know that I am committed to helping and I would love to hear from you. All right. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it very much. As usual, very great information, concrete information that we can take and apply. We thank you very much for attending today. Like Karen said, you will get the thank you email. Also know that next Wednesday and next Friday, we will have webinars as well. So if you haven't signed up to receive notifications, please do on the belonging website. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again and serving you again. Thank you, happy Friday, and we're signing off. Thanks. Karen, thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend, friend. You too.